actually, I mean, this it's it's funny because I so I'm a designer on our carrier experience team. I'm mostly working on our driver app today, um, but I've been at Uber almost three years now, and I've spent most of those that time in the ride sharing market, in the ride sharing world, thinking about all the problems involved in that. And it's been a really interesting challenge and and change of pace and 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 really kind of different ball game altogether coming into freight partly because it's like understanding what technology we can reuse as well as like what interfaces we can reuse all all to solve this big huge problem we call freight um and so eric, as eric mentioned um fundamentally our and at a super high level our app helps connect um, drivers to shippers really in the same general way that uh, uber's ride sharing app connects riders to drivers um and so as I started to think about this and as I joined Freight from the ride sharing world, um, I, and I was working on kind of rider and driver facing problems, at, at Uber we have a really uh, user, -centric, user, excuse me, user centric design process, um, but it's also super data centric. Um, and so what that means is that everything we do is in some way informed by how our users are using our products from the data perspective. We're, we're keeping a careful eye on that and, and changing it accordingly. But we're also getting out there in the field, as, as Eric talked about, at these truck shows and, and other, any opportunity possible, really, to, to get it out front of our, our drivers, shippers, people in facilities, to understand what problems they're facing in the world and try to design our, our products not exactly the way that things have been done in the past, but actually trying to move the industry forward in a big way. Um, so it's been super interesting as well to go from this super consumer facing challenge to a really a kind of business to business challenge. Um, really uh, different set of underlying things that we can assume about what the user knows and doesn't know and a totally uh, different demographic um, as we mentioned before. So truck drivers are not at all like most people in this room and definitely not like me. Um, and my very first week, uh, it, it was one of the best experiences having, be, being able to go to the Great America Trucking Show in Dallas and um, spending hours just having conversations super naively with truck drivers about what their life is like, the kind of problems that they have in their lives, um, and then trying to think about ways that we can solve them with basically no knowledge about how freight works. It was probably the best introduction I could have possibly had to the, the freight world. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of the challenges in designing for, for drivers at Uber that I, that I saw and how that sort of relates to driving, designing for truck drivers, um, how they're similar, how they're different. I think most people in this room have, and I hope, have used Uber, so you'll be able to kind of understand from that perspective. Um, and then I'll talk about a little bit about how we applied that to a recent project that we worked on. Um, so when we talk about what is important to drivers, um, whether that be ride-sharing drivers or truck drivers, always, always the first thing that comes up is earnings. Um, and it makes sense. Uber offers a brand new way of working that uh, is, is super flexible and is, is up to the driver on how they want to work. That involves moving people, involves moving food, now involves moving freight. Um, and both Uber ride-sharing drivers as well as truck drivers want to maximize those earnings so that they can live the life they want to live. Um, and while most Uber drivers that I was designing for before have a general sense of how much they want to make, some are super, super ambitious with that, others are doing it as a way to supplement their income. Uh, for freight drivers, they're mostly the, the primary source of income for their entire household, for themselves and their family. So what they're making week to week um, makes a huge difference in their lives and be able to put um, food on the table for their, themselves and their family. So as a result, most drivers spend a ton of time calling around negotiating rates, um, faxing on the phone, and even enlisting family members to help them with that process. We see that a lot. Um, and technology like what we've brought um, to the ride-sharing world, upfront pricing, can help eliminate that entirely from the job. If they can spend less time on the phone, and haggling and negotiating, and more time driving, they're going to make more money. So upfront pricing is something we brought from that world into freight and takes a lot of that hassle out of the world, bring a lot more predictability to like a really pretty unpredictable industry. Um, the second thing that's really important to drivers is respect. Um, and as you saw in the video, and, and we've heard many of these stories from drivers, they just, a lot of drivers still feel pretty disrespected in many ways, um, both from shippers, from facility owners, even from just other drivers on the road as we kind of weave in and out of traffic around them. Um, they feel it in every way. And 
it's not just we want to give a, a new way of working and, and an easier way of earning money, but we, we do want to change this and bring some more respect to drivers as well. Um, experienced drivers realize that like a key part of the, doing the job is about professionalism and it's about customer service. Um, and because mostly we're working with owner operators, so essentially they're entrepreneurs. And so the same skill set that any entrepreneur in this room might have might have had to develop is this, is generally the same kind of skill set that really good owner operators of trucks learn to develop as well about personal relationships and building that um, that two way street and that can bring respect with it. Um, so when we start to think about again, like how can we bring something really unique to this as Uber, uh, we spent a lot of time developing our two way rating system on the rider side. And what that did was set a new standard between riders and drivers about how that interaction should work in the car so that there's more accountability to it, there's more safety, as well as more respect in the end of the day. Um, and we've really been operating in this pretty driver first mentality since the very first day that we started with freight. And we're trying to, um, you know, over a year ago, and that means doing the right thing for the driver. Sometimes when it's at odds with really established and really old conventions in the industry. Um, so an example of that, um, we recently launched a new tool for dispatchers. Um, and if you're not familiar, dispatchers are, is a role that can, ha that serves a role in, in a fleet of drivers. And what they can do is take a load and assign it to a driver and tell them what to do. And essentially the interaction really works like that. I tell you what to do and you're gonna do it. Um, and there's no visibility from the drivers in terms of what price of the load they're gonna take home there. Um, there's no decision whether they're going to do it or not. And we start to talk to drivers about it. Um, this was one of those things where we saw an opportunity to do something differently. So our new dispatcher mode not only lets drivers see the details of a load before they accept it, but they have 30 minutes to say, yes or no, I want to do that load. Um, so we're excited to get that out there. And it's, it's tough because not all dispatchers love that. <laughs> um, but we fundamentally believe that if we do the right thing by drivers, that we can start to move this industry forward in the right direction. Um, the third thing I want to talk about is freedom. And this is one of the big reasons why drivers get into this industry in the first place is being behind the wheel of a truck, deciding what you're going to do, owning your own business, and not having a boss who's going to tell you what to do every day. Because there is that alternative um, career for many of them, and they've decided to do this both for the money and, and for this reason as well. Um, and before working with Uber, um, drivers, uh, I think, have a lot of less freedom and flexibility than I'd like. And certainly in, when we saw in the taxi industry, it was the same thing, where working long, really inflexible hours, not even necessarily owning the, the vehicle that you had, um, can, can be, take a, quite a toll on people's ability to live the life that they want to live. And for truck drivers, it can mean, as we talked about before, 200 days a year away from home, weeks away from their family, and kind of those important life events that they're missing out on that we've, we've heard from um, drivers firsthand. Um, and we really aim to like, empower drivers with the technology that we're bringing them, so letting them set their own schedule and tell us what they, uh, if they want to be home every night or just the weekends, or if they only want to drive within their state or they don't want to do snowy lanes. Um, these are all kind of things that we've heard and we want to build a product to accommodate in a, in a way that um, it works for the drivers so they're not having to do all the math in their head of uh, 50,000 pounds and I got to go over this super um, mountainous terrain and what does that can mean, mean for my fuel efficiency? Something as complicated as that down to the fact that I want to be home tomorrow and I want to see lanes that are going to get me there. So building a super personalized recommendation engine that can help drivers get to where they want to go. Um, so the Uber Freight app is where this all starts to come together. So um, from an earnings perspective, you can see within our loads here, you can see the upfront price displayed right there. Drivers see exactly what they're going to take home. Um, and then kind of from that freedom perspective, we offer a lot of flexible ways of filtering, searching, and finding loads that they're looking for, as well as we make recommendations to drivers, not only just to get them home, but you know loads that are going to bring them uh, back to where they are now, a, a backhaul or potentially a reload where they're going to go so that they can keep making money and they're not left stranded um, where they are without any opportunities. Um, but late last year when we started to look at how drivers were using the app and specifically finding the load that they're looking for and using search, we saw some opportunities for improvement. Um, and this is one of those, those uh, instances where we start to use data uh, to help see what's going on. 
Um, so we, what we started to see in search um, was that a lot of drivers were actually not using some of these filters up top here. So deciding where I'm going to pick up or drop off, when I'm going to pick it up, what kind of trailer I have, as well as some of these distance uh, shortcuts and filters here. Um, what we did see as well is that it was, uh, took a long time to actually find the load that they were looking for. So they're spending a lot of time in the app. Um, and unlike most companies, a lot of time in the app for us is a bad thing. Um, we want drivers to spend less time in the app and actually more time on the road doing the job that they're doing. Um, so bringing a lot of efficiency to the job. So search time, what we actually saw though was that people did use these filters that search time dropped. So we saw an opportunity if we could make these um, search filters more usable, we could actually help them find the work that they were looking for quicker. The other thing that um, as a new designer to the team I came in was just looking at this um, these search and filter designs here uh, and knowing what I the very little that I knew about truck drivers at the time was again there's tech tend to be less technically savvy than what we saw on the ride sharing side especially in terms of using apps um, most drivers are using the most popular apps that you have on your phone Facebook's and YouTube's and that but beyond that we're not looking at like super sophisticated UI patterns and that kind of thing outside and no more um, and so looking at the, the four filters up top you can hardly see it on the screen and that's probably even a bigger knock against the UI I think that we have but the super dark gray background made these four kind of boxes up top um, not look super tappable not like you can interact with them the second thing is um, we're sort of mixing interaction models so we had these drop downs up top and then we had these buttons below that were sort of shortcuts to distance filters and those went to separate pages. So we were sort of mixing things up and it was, it was a little conflicting as well. And lastly, it's taking up about half the screen, which never a great thing if your content is pushed halfway down the screen. Um, you really wanna focus as much and let people see as many loads as possible so they can make some decisions. Um, so had an initial gut check, we had some data, but that wasn't enough. We needed to actually understand like what was important to drivers and finding the work that they were looking for. So. We were out at uh, the Great America Trucking Show, and this is, a, this is just a shot from the Mid-America Trucking Show. Our uh, Greg, who works with us here at Uber Freight, has also uh, been a driver for years and years, was moderating a session here. But, and this is one of the kind of things that we do at trucking shows is, is um, talk with drivers and understand what's important to them. The other thing we do is put prototypes in their hands and see what's working, what's not working in our designs. So really cool opportunity as a designer, again, to get face-to-face to understand what's important to them, but also to validate your work. Um, and what we saw, <laughs> long hair in like hot parking lot in Texas in the middle of August, um, is that um, drivers have a set of preferences that, that are really personal to them. And there's certain things that change and there's certain things that really don't change. The, th the things that don't change are like the trailer that I own. So it's a refrigerated trailer, a reefer, or it's a drive-in. That kind of thing is pr pretty locked in for a driver unless I'm a big fleet owner. Um, so that could probably stay the same every time I launch the app. Same with how far I wanna go. Most drivers kind of associate with themselves with either being a long haul driver or driving locally in short or local hauls. So again, two things that don't need to um, be reset every single time that I launch the app. Um, but the most important things are both the location of the load and the price of the load. So where is it and how much am I gonna get paid for it? I um, mean, we start to look at the app. Fundamentally, uh, what we're doing here is it's this list view. And so if pick and pickup location is, is the most, one of the most important things, and I'll explain a little why. If a driver has to go 100 miles to their pickup location, that's 100 miles of empty truck, it's 100 miles of burned fuel, and that's all coming out of their pocket. And it can cost up to $900 to fill up a truck's fuel tank. So super, super important consideration is how far I have to go what's called deadhead to get to this load. Um, and this list didn't do a great job of showing how far that load was away. Um, and lastly, we weren't remembering their selections across the sessions here, which was another kind of like kick me while I'm down moment as a user is like, I've put in the effort to, to tell you what's important to me. And then you forget that next time I launch the app. It's a little bit not encouraging for me to use that particular interface. Um, so what do we do for drivers? Well. List is, an, is one thing, is good for seeing loads over time, but what's better is a map. Um, so we built a map view now so drivers could see opportunities around them to, for work. 
Um, so rather than seven different entry points to filter and search for what they're looking for, we just did one. Um, so I designed it using a pretty ubiquitous uh, UI pattern, the trusty search box and magnifying uh, glass icon included. Again, just relying on really well-known conventions um, for this particular user and just keeping it super simple as an entry point. Um, so uh, we also learned that drivers only look out for work about a week or so in advance, which um, I, I was surprised about when I learned this, but makes sense given the kind of unpredictable nature of the job. So previously what you would have to do is either uh, tap that pick up date filter, scroll along date maybe to get to your date, tap it, and a bit of loading, and then I would get to the date I was looking for. Um, but what most users did was actually just scroll the list, which is probably what we were seeing in our data is scrolling past up to maybe 50 loads at a time to basically get to the three days from now that I'm looking for. So we built them a date picker. Um, so this date picker lets them tap once and get to the day that they want to look for up to a few days in advance, up to, I think, a couple of weeks. Um, again, simplifying the things that we, we learned from research were important to drivers. Um, last thing I mentioned is recommendations. So I talked about um, loads that can get drivers home if they want to. In our app, those are indicated by the star icon so as a recommendation. So if, uh, on the map, if you see a star icon, that means we have a load that we think is really good for you. And we use that throughout the app to tell them um, to look for that. Um, lastly, tapping on the search, and we're losing a bit of the UI. I always want like a crystal, like 4K presentation <laughs> display as a designer, but you know, <laughs> can't always get what you want. Um, so I consolidated all the selections into a search panel here and let them configure exactly what they were looking for. So if I'm a long haul driver, I can turn off search and local and see exactly in the matching loads up top how that um, is reflected in the search. And those would be saved between sessions as well. And lastly, so if the driver is interested in this, tapping through, um, it's one tap to book a load in the Uber Freight app. And that sounds like maybe obvious to a lot of people in the room who have used a lot of apps, but for drivers, that's huge. Being able to get um, instantly that is yours, um, rather than hours and hours of phone calls and haggling. Um, so we're in the process of rolling out this new search experience. We're going to continue to keep an eye on the data as we, as we do with all features that we roll out. We're gonna do some additional field testing if numbers are not necessarily going in the direction that we want to continue to iterate. Um, but yeah, as a designer, I think this is this process of not just sitting in our office here, um, you know, in Sketch or Photoshop or any of our animation tools all day and cranking out pixels, it's, it's, that's probably a fraction of the job of actually getting out there and getting in front of users and working with the super talented teams of data scientists and engineers and operations people and product managers here at Uber Freight. So um, ultimately what we're trying to do with all that is really to empower drivers to do more rewarding work with, with more respect, more freedom, um, and get the kind of earnings that they're looking for. And we really deeply, deeply care about doing that in a way that um, moves the industry forward by placing drivers at the heart of everything we do. So that's all I got. Thank you.